Welcome to WebSpeed, exclusively from Sand Dollar Digital Design Incorporated. My name is David Bailey, and I'm the creator of WebSpeed. In this video, I want to talk just a little bit about chart rows and columns under the page type HTML page or home page. Uh, inside the uh, page, it tells here what the uh, page type is. And in this particular case, this will either say HTML page or home page. Now, We've looked at several different section types in here, and remember, we're talking about building blocks, things that we can put one on top of the other to build the content of our page. And to see that content up in the upper right-hand corner, there's always a link directly to that particular page that you're working on. And it's good to have two tabs open, one for your uh, WebSpeed account where you can work and say make, make and save changes, and then another one to go and look and see what your changes actually look like. It makes it very easy to flip back and forth rather than having to go find each page back and forth and it can really make uh, the whole process a lot longer. Now in some of the other videos we've talked about a few different sections. One we've talked about is uh, the ones that have text on one side and an image, and in this case it's a broken image, but an image on the other side and vice versa. Uh, that's one type of section we have. Sometimes we may just have a block of text, and uh, sometimes we may, may just need a little bit of extra space. However, sometimes we need something a little bit more than those very basic designs can provide. Now, the basic designs will provide anywhere from 50 to 90 percent of the content of a website. Most of the websites that we do, we've built on a box on the left with text, a box on the right with images. If you look at most websites that are uh, designed for informational purposes, you'll see that kind of, of a pattern used repeatedly. But there's going to come a time when you need to just have a chart of some kind. And the chart rows and columns, which we're going to look at, I'll give a little bit of advance warning because this is one of the most complex sections there are. Uh, there will be another video on more of the settings, but we're going to talk about some of the very basics. And you, you can see here we have a chart rows and columns. This one is one, two, three, four columns wide and one, two, three, four, five rows long. This one here is one row by three columns. We can make these uh, chart rows and columns any dimension that we want to, and they can include images and plenty of other features inside there too. So when we insert an image, we look here and down a little bit low, it may be the very bottom or it may just be pretty close to the bottom. You'll see chart rows and columns. And that's the type that we want to select. When we select it, it comes up with the standard chart. And the standard chart is going to come up uh, with some just pre-selected colors and white backgrounds in here. The uh, lighter color background is going to be used out here. This is all just a starting point, and that's what you need to think of this. This is t this is the uh, way to get you started. Now, for instance, let's just say we need a grid with two columns and two rows, and we can see up here we can set the number of rows and the number of columns. We can also set the border color. As we can see here, it's set to this uh, medium color. We can set, of course, the border width. We've talked about these in other videos. In fact, there's a link to one right there that you can look at that talks about the uh, border color and border width. We can also select the white space, and we've talked about white space before. That's the space from the edge of the line to the edge of the contents of a cell. In this particular case, we can see that it's set to three pixels. Now, if that's as far as you go, it won't look like very much here, but you'll notice every single one of these boxes over here has its own format button. And if you hit that format button, you can see there's a lot more options inside here. And that's not all the options there are. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. For, but for right now, we're looking at one line of text in each one of these cells, and we're mainly dealing with that. Now, the nice thing about a table like this, we can set each cell up to be different. Like maybe we want this one to be center align. Uh, this one over here, we want to be, oh, let's make it uh, center align as well. This one here we're going to leave as left align, and we can go and customize every single uh, cell within this table. And uh, we can also change the color of the background of that cell. 
right now. They're generally set to white, uh, and um, we can set it to maybe we want to, one to be yellow and another one to be, oh, let's select a, a custom color over here just for the fun of it. We'll make this one, uh, what's that, like a, um, uh, oh, it's a kind of a green, neon green, I guess. And we can change the text colors in these. And just, we can go wild with them. And be careful about going wild. You don't want to go wild on the whole page. But let's say this is a uh, column header. And this over here is going to be another column header. Now you'll notice that my typing doesn't stop just because I come to the end of that box. You can type pretty much as long as you want to in here. And it will always be in there. And you can see I'm using the arrow key to move left and right to see uh, all the content in there. And we're going to look at something here in just a moment. And let's look here at, uh, let's make this uh, my product. And we're going to make my product um, $10. Now remember we set over here, we set this to two rows, two columns. And right now I can go over here and I can say pre click preview this section. And what's going to happen here is it will just bring the information up, kind of refresh the picture, the, the uh, layout, and let you see what you've got so far. And you can see there's a green and there's the, the lighter yellowish color and um, so on and so forth. Now. I look at this, now when I hit preview this section, it just changes here. This does not change on the web page itself. It kind of gives me a chance to look at it uh, kind of partially here, get an idea of what it looks like, maybe change a few things. And I decide, let's say I decide, uh, okay, you know what, I want this whole row up here, the head, I want those cell colors to be this dark red. And you'll notice, I didn't hit the format in here, I hit the format to the left. And what this does is this formats everything in the row. And you'll notice in here, there's a lot of different choices in here. And right down here where I selected color, it was originally selected this first one. And what this first one means on every one of these is no change. You'll see it's kind of grayed out. And if it's left there, no change to that particular attribute will be made to this row. But in this case, I want to change the whole row to red, and I'm going to change the text color to this yellowish color. And that's actually going to make the change to the whole row. Now, one thing that you'll find is preview this section does not work on the whole row format. And you'll notice there's a whole column format. And up here on the left, this is the whole table format. We can change some one attribute or all the attributes of the whole table at one time. But for these to take effect, these global uh, attributes to take effect. We have to hit the save this now and it's going to come back to our managed web page and if we scroll down a little we can see there's the section that we just created and it's also on the web page. And this is just a kind of a junk practice play around type website that we use for web speed training occasionally and uh, so it's not really I'm not really too concerned about broken images for this uh, for the time being, but you can get an idea, okay, there is that section, and that's what it looks like. And we can go in, and we can make a few more changes to it now. One thing I noticed, though, is that sure did come out awfully narrow. So down here, we've talked about the section width, and we can set the overall width. Let's say we want that to be 75%, and that's 75% from the edge of the content to the other edge of the content, from edge to edge. Right now, it's probably, I don't know, about 25%, but I want to make this 75% and spread that out. And let's just suppose I want to make this row also bold. And you'll notice here, this is to check if you want to make this whole row bold. This is to make the whole row not bold. This is to make no change to the, to the row. So re remember, it's not just a bold and unbold check. It's also a no change check, which at, at that point, it would go to whatever the settings was in the cell. So this one, we're going to make both of these cells bold text. We've changed the width here a little bit. And we're going to click Save Changes now. 
And when we come back to the outside here, we look at our section, and sure enough, is 75% of the width. Those two rows are bold now, and they're kind of centered in there. This is the name of whatever. There's the price. This is a common use for a chart that we might see. And uh, we get a good idea of what that's going to look like. I'm going to go back in and edit it. Now, one thing we can do, we say, oh, you know what? I need another column between the product and the price. And maybe I need to put a little bit more detail about that product. Now, one click only, once you come in here, if I want to insert a column right here on this line, right down this center, I have a little tiny INS, and that will actually insert a row here and move everything over. So I'll have three, row, three columns at that point. So I click Insert, and you'll notice that that Insert Delete has disappeared from here. So I've got the one chance to add, and you'll see I'm going to show you here how to make another chance to add in just a moment. But um, let's just say in this one, uh, Details. If we can spell it right, I got to get my keys and the fingers in the right place on the keyboard. And I'm going to center this. I'm going to make the uh, cell color dark, the text color there. And I'm going to hide that format. And then down here, I'm going to say this is the best product in the world. Every household needs one. And we're going to be very proud of our products and say save, click save changes. And now we can see that we've created a third row in here in the middle. And we've put in some more information. Now, if I wanted to add yet another column in here, if I go back in now, you'll notice that that insert and delete is back. Now, yes, there is a delete there. I can also delete a column, too. So I'm going to add another row. And if I hit this insert, it's actually going to insert a row here. But if I want to add a row at the bottom, I simply go over here to the left where it says number of rows. And I'm going to change that to three. And I'm going to hit. Now, remember, these changes over here, you can use preview this section. It's only the uh, options that are in this top and side, the row and column headers, that you really cannot use this uh, preview this section. But you'll notice now we have a third row. And I want to say uh, my service. And let's say this one is going to be $5,000 to put in the product. And we're going to save changes now. And we come back out. And you'll notice I do this a lot. I go make a few changes, go see what it looks like, and then I come back and make a few more changes. So we can see, oh, whoops, I didn't align that uh, price to the right. So I go over here, click Edit. And I can go in and align this to the right. Save changes. And you can see now that price lines up with the price above it. Another thing to notice here is the word my product is actually in the middle vertically of this box, and the price is in the middle vertically of this box. There may be times when you want this to all line up to the top of the box or the bottom of the box. There is one setting in here which we can use to make that change. And uh, most commonly, people will make everything align the top. If there's headers, you may want to make your headers align the bottom. It's, it's really just a matter of preference. But I can go in here and say, select vertical alignment right there. I want it to be top aligned. And I can go do each cell, or I can go do the whole row. Select vertical alignment, top align. Save changes now. And now you'll notice that in this particular section, now this text is aligned on the top 
of these cells. Sometimes that makes something a little bit better to read, but in reality, it's truly a preference thing. If you want it to be that way, do it that way. If you don't want it to be that way, do it another way. It's, it's, it really is no wrong way. It's just a good thing to know how to do it if you need it. Another, like you'll see here, we were talking about the headers. These headers are centered. Maybe I want these headers to be lined up against the bottom of the cell. So I go back in here. Under the whole row format, I just tell it, let's make this whole row bottom aligned. Save changes. And we come back out here, and sure enough, now details, everything lines up along the bottom. Now something that, uh, another thing we can do here, now notice how this actually forces onto two lines, and this actually forces onto two lines. There's two ways to handle if you want that to actually fit on one line, and maybe we want to make this column wider, this column narrower, and so forth. We have two things we can do. The first thing, which is the very obvious thing, is we can actually go up here and tell the system that I want this column to actually be, let's uh, give this 40%, and let's give this 40%. Now, all across here, these need to total up to 100%, and you can see here it says total 100%. So that would mean this would need to be 20%. But one nice thing about this, if you set everything except for one, it'll set all the other columns to the right width. And whatever's left, it will give to the remaining column. So I'm going to just leave it at zero, which will just give whatever is left. And in this case, it's the 20% to that center column. And if we look down here, you'll notice that that center column is obviously half the width of these other two columns. But our headers are now on single lines. One final thing that we can do to make those work that way, and let's go back in here and edit. I'm going to take off the width on this last one over here. I want that particular line to come out as one line. If we look in the format for this cell, it says down here, do not wrap text. And that's exactly what it is. It's going to make that box wide enough to fit that text. Now, incidentally, right below it, it says show line two. And we're going to talk about that in another. You get all the exact same settings for a second line in each one of these cells. And that's going to be uh, covered in another video. But if I don't want to wrap the text here, and I just want this column just to be wide enough for that text right there, I'm going to click Save Changes Now. And if I come down, you'll notice this column is exactly as wide as that text is, and only that wide. What's happening here is this text is actually pushing this column as wide as it can get it while we're not wrapping this column. Now, if things don't work out, HTML does take some liberties. Uh, so you, this is one of the biggest reasons you have to come back and check and make sure that everything is fitting, because sometimes the uh, liberties that HTML takes will really blow your mind and you'll not know what happened. So again, we have to go back and check frequently. So there's one more feature I want to cover in this video, and we're just about done here with some of the very basics. And you'll notice, I, you know, I'm going back and forth, I'm playing with the settings, I'm looking at what looks good. Uh, don't be afraid to do that. Try out the settings, try the different features that we have in here. There's really not a lot you can do to break it. Uh, and I'll be uh, honest, people occasionally just call us and say, hey, I think I broke something, can you fix it? And we most of the time know, okay, within a couple of clicks we can fix something. And that's what we're here for. We're not uh, just going to give you this website and then never talk to you again. We're here to help. We're here to help the small business owner. But one other thing I want to show here, let's just take this cell here that has all this text in it. And suppose I don't want it all in a small cell here, but I want to combine these two cells. There is one other feature in here, and that's the span rows and span columns. In this particular case, I want to combine these two, so I want this cell to span two rows. What that means is this cell will be two rows high. And if I hit preview this section, you'll see this cell is now a little bit taller, or twice as tall, because it has combined both of these cells. This is the best product 
and service in the world. Okay, that looks good. Oh, and let me just mention here, you'll notice this is set to 40%. It actually does make, once it knows this is going to be wider, it makes this uh, space a little bit more, which is nice. If you have a little bit more to type in here than you're comfortable working in with, don't be afraid to open up a text editor. Uh, Windows and Macintosh computers both have text editors, Notepad or Word or whatever, where you can type some text. And uh, if you have a whole paragraph you want to type, don't be afraid to type it elsewhere, even save it if you need to, and then copy and paste that uh, text into this uh, into this tiny space. But it's all still there. And I'm going to click on Save Changes now. And now when we come back out and we look at our web page, and remember, when we're looking at our web page, I have not hit the Refresh or Reload button yet. It's just looking at a copy of the way it looked the last time I looked at it. But I go hit Refresh or Reload, and suddenly we have this beautiful little table with the columns bold, the prices all lined up to the right. We have text all... Uh, covering uh, in this cell that's covering both rows and we have my product and my service. We can do tons and tons of various uh, shapes and sizes in here. In fact, you can see here this particular cell actually covers three columns. You can make a, a single cell go all the way across if you want to or from top to bottom. And it's just completely up to your imagination and, and the needs that you have for a particular section as to what you can create there. Be sure to subscribe to the Sand Dollar Digital Design Incorporated YouTube channel for access to all the web speed training videos available. Feel free to ask questions in the comments of our YouTube videos. This is David Bailey, and I will talk to you in the next video lesson.